Hello there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explained. So Apple has had its uh, Worldwide Developer Conference for 2022 and during the keynote speech, it has announced the new M2 processor, the Apple Silicon M2, of course, the successor to the M1. The question is, is this a revolutionary uh, advancement or is it just a normal upgrade? Well, if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so as I'm sure you're aware, in 2020, Apple started a migration away from Intel processors to its own Apple Silicon. And that basically means in the most crudest of terms, it was taking the same chip that you get in the iPhone and the iPad, and it was upgrading it, making it beefier, and putting it into the Macs. So basically, the uh, iPhone, the iPad, and the Mac all basically use the same uh, CPU cores now, which of course based on the ARM architecture, rather than based on the x86 architecture, which you get in Intel and AMD processors. And so we had the M1, that was the first uh, version, and that was based really on what the A14 uh, processor from Apple, but it had more CPU cores and more GPU cores, because of course it's in a laptop form factor, which you get a bigger battery and better cooling. And then after that, over time, we had kind of even greater upgrades. They were kind of started sticking these chips uh, kind of together. So you get more and more cores and more and more GPU cores and you get, you know, the M1 Pro and the M1 Max and the M1 Ultra and you get some really big, beefy, multi-core, multi-GPU core uh, setups all inside of kind of laptops and, and, and minis and so on. Now I've got videos about all of those chips here on this channel if you want to catch up with any of the details. Now, while all that was happening, Apple also released the A15 processor, which was in that then the latest generation of iPhone. And But what happened is the M1 continued to be based on what was in the A14. So now here we are in 2022, and we finally have the M2. And it looks like what the M2 is, is basically the A15 that you find in the iPhone. It, that's basically been turned into a laptop processor, just like they did with the M1 and the A14. So what does that mean in real terms? Well, in real terms, it means you're gonna get a CPU boost, you're gonna get a GPU boost, and importantly, you're gonna get some memory advantage, which we'll talk about in a minute. So starting with the CPU, we've got the eight CPU cores, just like in the M1, a four plus four setup, so four high performance cores, four high efficiency cores. A Couple of things to note, the four uh, high performance cores are as we're saying, probably based on the A15 cores. So you're gonna see an uplift there in a performance just because of a new CPU design. There may be greater, higher frequencies. This is built on the latest TSMC 5 nanometers, the second generation of TSMC's 5 nanometers. There may be some wiggle room there where they've been able to uh, boost up the clocks. And there's also four megabytes more of L2 cache compared to the uh, M1. Now the four high efficiency cores, Apple say they have been significantly enhanced and that's in line with what we saw with the A15. With the A15, Apple did put a lot of effort into making those high energy efficiency cores actually have a greater performance, which means of course the overall system performance uh, is of course uh, uplifted because you've got both sets of cores uh, offering good performance when you're doing multitasking applications. Now, some of you may think, hold on a second, four plus four, four high performance cores, four high efficiency cores, that's what we get in an Android uh, smartphone, this octa-core setups. Why are Apple only doing this in a laptop and not in the iPhone? The thing to remember is that their high performance cores are power hungry, which means they can only put two of them in an iPhone. If they put four in, it wouldn't cope with the battery and of course you get too much heat. And they do do it in bigger devices like for example, some of the iPads. And the reason for that is because now with a bigger form factor, you've got more battery and you've got more thermals, but they can't do it down uh, into a smartphone. But that doesn't matter because these cores are so uh, high performant that they take up that more energy, but they offer a great performance, which is why you still get the iPhone leading in the benchmarks in terms of uh, CPU performance. And now, of course, in the laptop setup, just like with the M1, we've got this in the M2, we've got four of them. So even from the start, I know, I'm sure we're gonna get M1 Pro, M2 Pros, M2 Maxes, M2 Ultras, and all this kind of stuff. But even from the start, of course, the M2 processor is offering greater uh, of performance in the CPU than you would you know, on an iPad or, a, or, or an iPhone, for sure. 
And there's also the boost in the GPU. We've got again, the new generation of GPU, which first appeared uh, in the A15. And now we've got up to 10 cores. Some models do still come with eight cores, but up to 10 cores. So the 10 core version with the improvements in the GPU architecture and the extra two cores, Apple are saying you can get a 35% uh, GPU boost compared to the M1. Apple have also released various statistics and graphs about the power efficiency and the performance, not only compared to the M1, but also compared to some Intel systems. You need to really check the small print about what they're saying, and they do tell you uh, which laptops they're comparing against. But one of the interesting ones I found was like, in one of the things, it was 15 times more powerful than the Intel generation of the MacBook Air. This was part of the presentation. And of course, yes, because that the MacBook Air back in the day had a dual core processor running at 1.6 gigahertz. So, you know, you're trying to compare that to an octa-core processor you know, running at maybe, you know, almost twice the clock frequency. Of course, it's going to be loads and loads faster, but it just shows you how technology has moved on. No disrespect to Intel or to Apple, but just shows you how far uh, technology has moved on from those days of the dual core uh, i5, I think it was, MacBook Airs, up to the newest MacBook Airs with the M2 that Apple, of course, have just announced. Now, one of the big things about the M2, which I think is going to really make it quite uh, important in terms of the overall performance that we're going to see from it, is this increase in memory bandwidth and also the increase in the maximum amount of memory. So the M1, if you remember, we were back, you know, it's kind of eight gigabytes, 16 gigabytes. And, you know, it, this, it, the very first one just didn't have the memory capabilities that was needed. And then as they boosted up to the M, uh, you know, the M1 Pro and the M1 Ultra and all this kind of stuff, they kind of increased the amount of memory. But there are reports that the memory became a bottleneck because this kind of just adding on more and more cores and more and more GPU cores didn't really, the memory couldn't scale to go with it. Now, the M2 starts off already with a 50% more memory bandwidth than the basic uh, M1, and it supports up to 24 gigabytes of RAM to start with. So that means that you can actually buy a MacBook now or pre-order it with an M2 and 24 uh, gigabytes of RAM. And then of course that means when we see going upscaling, you know, the Mac, the M, the Mac Pro uh, with an M2 in it and an M2 Pro and M2 Max, whatever they end up putting it, you're going to see some big numbers in terms of memory uh, capabilities and memory bandwidth. So this is going to be a significant uh, boost. Although we've got the, the better CPU, we've got the better GPU, we've got more GPU cores, I think we're going to find it's this memory bandwidth that's really going to make the difference when it comes to overall system performance. So overall, the M2 has a 20 billion transistors. That's about 25% more than you get in the M1. Those transistors are being used for what? Well, you've got two extra GPU cores. You've got uh, more, four megabytes more of uh, of uh, L2 cache across those high performance cores. Of course, you've got the new CPUs and the new GPUs themselves. There's obviously other changes in terms of the encode and decode, video encode, decode, and all this kind of stuff that's basically made it's grown in its size. And of course, now we're on this TSMC five nanometer second uh, generation of a uh, process node. So overall, uh, technically an upgrade, not a revolution. Which does lead us to the question of Apple's cadence, cadence being you know, how often these chips are released. If you remember, we had the A14 released in 2020, then we had the M1, and then in 2021, we had the A15, but Apple continued with the M1 Pro, the M1 Ultra, all based on the A14. And now we've got the, uh, uh, the M2, which is based on the A15. But of course, in just a few months time, we're going to see the A16 come out. And so will Apple then make more M2s, M2 Pro, M2 Ultra based on the A15 when the, the A16 is coming out? At some point, we're expecting our Apple to move over to ARM V9. Now that could happen with the A16. I thought it would actually happen with the A15. It didn't. So I'm expecting it to happen with the A16. And at that point, now you've got a change of architecture level. And you've also got other features that uh, get added in. I've got videos here about ARM um, V9 here on this channel. And so are we expecting that to be the moment when Apple go for a really amazing 
uh, upgrade or are they just going to keep going with this here's the m1 here's the m1 pro here's the m1 max here's the m2 here's the m2 pro the problem is is if they keep going like that in the end there becomes a quite a big divergence where the iphone processors are going out once a year a new one and the apple mac processors are coming at one every two years which means they're going to be increasingly slower compared to what you've got in the iphone pro so at some point there has to be an alignment or some kind of change in the cadence because in the end, the iPhone processors will be two or three generations ahead of the, of the Mac processors. So it'll be interesting to see what Apple are gonna do about that. It's not clear to me at the moment what they're gonna do. If the A16 comes out with ARM V9, then the M3 has to be ARM V9. The question is, is the M3 gonna be a 2023 processor or are we gonna see it in 2024? which means, you know, again, we've got this big gap between what's coming out on the iPhone and what's coming out on the Mac. Okay, so that's about it. So there are two Macs available for pre-order with the M2 processor in it, MacBook Air, MacBook One model, MacBook Pro. They will ship in a few weeks, and then, of course, we'll see some actual benchmark numbers to see whether there really has been this 18%, uh, up to 35% increase in CPU and GPU, respectively. Okay, my name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Don't forget, you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains. And I also have a monthly newsletter. Go over to GaryExplains.com, type your email address, no spam, just the email newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.